This video is going to demonstrate how to create the ratchet. Now, being the fifth object of this problem set, it is designed to be a little bit more challenging than some of the objects that came before it. Uh, there is going to be some interesting sketching requirements that maybe you figured out, but maybe you're here to learn. Um, there's going to be a material I'm going to ask you to use. There's going to be uh, an appearance. Um, which is what, why you see this object, the finished object, is um, looks like metal. It has a chrome look to it. Uh, that is by design, and you're going to learn how to assign that to the object. Um, you're also going to use the fillet tool to give it the really nice uh, radius on the outside. And then you're going to do a little bit of engraving on the object itself. So... Let's go ahead and get started here. Well, the first thing we're going to do is zoom in and take a look at the sketch itself. So the sketch has a lot of information here. There are um, essentially what I what I did was I gave you a series of points, and you're going to use those points with the dimensions given to lay out the bottom half of your ratchet. The top half is essentially a mirrored version of the bottom half. Now, if you really wanted to, when you complete the bottom, you can do the same thing and uh, on the and, and complete the top in the same exact method. Um, what would be faster is to use the mirror tool to simply duplicate the bottom half that you created um, and essentially reflect it, mirror it onto the top. That's what I'm going to show you, um, but this is one of those cases where as long as you achieve the correct result, it's okay to find a different way to get there. And that's one thing I think it's important to talk about in CAD is that there's lots of different ways of doing things. And I'm not going to say what's right or wrong because it's the end result that dictates whether you were correct or not in your application of the, of the tools and the program itself. All right, let's go ahead and get started here. So essentially, I'm going to lay out the points and then I'm going to add the dimensions, and then I'm going to create this arc, with which uh, is mostly going to consist of three-point arcs, but there are actually a couple straight lines that make this work. And if you don't use the straight lines, you're going to have some issues later, which I'll try and show you. All right. I don't care which plane you start on, because to be honest, you can always change your view later. Now, one thing that is important is anything that we plan on um, having equal on the other side, my, the center point of my arc or circle needs to be in the middle. I'm going to go ahead and replicate the origin location that I'm given on the sketch on my workspace. And I'm going to start right off the bat with the construction line. Now, Anything, any of these sketch tools can be turned into a construction tool by simply clicking this little sideways looking Y button there. And the construction tool is really nice and handy to know because it allows you to put in dimension, to put in shape, to um, put in constraints uh, without impacting your 3D model in the end. And you will see how that works here, essentially. Um, okay, so I have my center line using the construction line. I, I'm going to start putting in some points here. And as closely as I can, I'm going to replicate what I'm given because I think it's just easier when it's organized essentially the same way. Okay. So I'm going to start putting in my points here. I'm just going to do it by my eye. It's not critical. I get them all in the right spot right now. That's what I'll come back and do with some dimensions. Let's see. I get the right number here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It looks like. Okay. So I have the rough shape here. Now, before I start putting in any arcs or lines, I'm going to put my dimensions in. I'm going to make get all these points in the right place to start off with. And like I said before, I'm going to organize them as close to the example 
then I can, so that I'll know if I'm missing something. Obviously, I'm going to use the same numbers. And they kind of all bunch up sometimes. So I'm just going to get them in a place where it's neat and organized and easy for me to check at a glance if it's appropriate and working right. It only takes a couple seconds to do, but it's very helpful. And then there's the one long dimension for the entire object. And that is 7.838. Oh, got to take the right number. Do that again. All right, now the center line did not figure out that it's supposed to remain on the origin line, but I can easily tell it. Same thing with my half arc there which also has a dimension that I need to assign. Okay, so now I have on my left to right dimensions for the points. Now I have vertical dimensions to the center line. So I'm gonna go put those in one by one. One kind of went over there. Let's bring that back. That is point nine six. And I believe this is the last one at point six three zero. Back over. Okay, so I have my points, everything's located, I am fully constrained, so up to this point, I'm pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on my curve. So I'm going to use a lot of the three-point arc tool. And the first and the last arc, you don't have a size, you're not given a size of the arc. But if you know that, uh, it came in construction, if you know that it needs to mirror and match the other side, then that's a pretty good indication that your center point is going to be on the center line, because otherwise it won't match the other side. And that's the type of stuff you can learn through experience. Now my construction is toggled on, so I just have to make sure that I turn those off. Now clearly in the picture, let me zoom in a little bit on my picture on the left. Nope, not that side. Open that sketch back up. On the left side of my example, I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit more on these curves. Now, if you focus on the curves themselves, the first, the second are clearly curves. You can see them curving. The third one, though, is pretty darn straight, and that's because it's a line. It's actually not a curve. If you put a curve in there, you're going to get some error messages, and I'll demonstrate that uh, just so we're all clear on it. But let's do one thing at a time here. Okay. So if I put another three-point arc in here, the question is, which way do I put the center point? How do I make this work? This one's clearly, the one that follows that is clearly uh, curved. Now, can I make those tangent with each other? No, I can't. And this is the point that this needs to be a straight line because it's telling you this won't work. I could even try it the other way and it's still going to be the same issue when I come back here. I'm not going to work over constraining. But if you take that arc out and you put a straight line in, then it works just fine. And I can put that tangent curve in with the next one. Now, if you're wondering, why am I putting all these tangents in here? Well, if you look at the example sketch, so right under the sketch, there's another example that shows lots of tangents in there 
So there's a tangent at every point along that path, except the last, because that is clearly not tangent. So for every intersection of, of that um, profile, you have tangents. So that's why it's important to make sure you put them in. All right, continuing on the path here, this one is clearly a curve. Clearly this one curves. You can even see the center point right there. So I need to make sure that I replicate that. Put in my tangent relationship there. But this next one, we run into that issue again. So if I were to put in an arc here, it won't work. Because I need another arc here. We definitely know that's an arc. And I run into the same issue again where I'm over constraining. Even if I get this one to work, that one doesn't work. So what does that tell you? What did you learn from the last example? That's a straight line. And then it works perfectly at that point. All right, so there is almost every part of that, that curve, that profile. The last one is an arc, but this one is not tangent, at least not from the bottom. Now remember what we said about that center point being on the center line. Not only does it lock it in because it fills in that missing piece of information, but it makes sure that when we mirror it, it's going to flow perfectly and be nice and smooth. Now to do the mirror, the mirror tool is under the pattern um, area of the toolbar. There's actually two ways to access mirror. One is after you're done, you can mirror features and other uh, finished objects, but in the sketch panel, there is a mirror tool, and that's what we're going to use. All right, so I just pre selected, I drug a box, but you could select each of these um, arcs and lines individually. You're going to select the mirror line, and that is your center line. And then once you have all that selected, you click apply, and sometimes you get this, and this is okay. You can't let it get, get you too frustrated. So at this point, I'm going to start selecting manually, like I told you is the other option. And I'm going to select just these components that I need. Select my mirror line, and then it works. It's a good lesson. Um, a lot of times with CAD, you just have to play with tools a few times, try some different ways to get them to work. They usually end up cooperating. Not always, but usually. All right, so here's my finished profile. Once you extrude this to the given depth, you're going to come back with a fillet cut, and that will be in the next video. So tune in for the next.